Hello and welcome to Midcap Radar. I'm Sonal Bhutra. With me as always is Vivek Iyer. Well, today uh, it is seeming like a day where we could see some more pressure. It's the monthly expiry as well. Uh, the last one hour of the trading day will be very, very crucial to watch out for as well. So we'll be tracking all of that and a lot more. But uh, Vivek, it's a power pack show today and we do have a lot of stocks to track as well. A lot of stocks to track, a lot of management to connect with. So quite a lot lined up on the show today. Let's start off with the top headlines. Indices are set to close a strong summer 2080. The Nifty registered gains of nearly 25%, while mid caps and small caps outperform, even as indices trade in the red today. Advances outstrip declines, pharma stocks gain, tech stocks drag. Manipuram Finance slips more than 3% after unit Ashirwad Microfinance's profit declines 36% and asset quality deteriorates in the second quarter. Prudent Corporate Advisory up over 11% after reporting Q2 numbers. Company saw its consolidated revenues rise nearly 15%, while total expenses grew 14% on a sequential basis. Paris Defence gains after receiving a 42 crore rupee order uh, from the Ministry of Defence. Company also reported its quarter to numbers where its revenue surged 43% on a YY basis. DCM Sriram up over 2% after reporting Q2 numbers. Revenues up 9.2% while EBITDA surges 59% on a year on year basis. Okay, all right, those are the top headlines and some stocks from the mid-cap space which are on our radar. By the way, the mid-cap space is not doing so well. It's now underperforming the benchmarks as well. At a point in time, both these indices were down around 3 tenths of a percent, but now that has been extended. Mid-cap index at the day's low, the advanced decline ratio in favor of the declines by a huge margin now. Um, so that's the kind of uh, picture that we are seeing. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the advanced decline ratio is in favor of the advances, despite that big cut that we are seeing on the mid-cap index right now. But a lot of stock specific action and we'll be discussing that through the course of the show. You're absolutely right. Uh, the advanced decline ratio you know, largely helped by the fact that the broader end of yeah. the market and uh, especially if you're looking at the small cap index that continues to remain in the green. A lot of stocks in the cash segment, they continue to move quite well in today's trading session. But a whole host of stocks is what Hormaz has on his radar. He's standing by the wall to discuss the list of stocks in the broader end of the market that are doing very well. Well, earnings have been a little considerate in taking a pause on Diwali Day, but earnings reactions continue thick and fast within the broader markets, especially the ones that came out yesterday. Aditya Bidla Capital down to the lowest point of the day. Biocon has recovered from the lows, now down only 2%. But IRB Infra after a soft quarter is seeing a bit of an impact in today's trading session. Some of the other movers and IT is the top sectoral loser today. And mid-cap IT is the one that is leading the losses. Look at this persistent emphasis, Bidla Soft, all of them seeing losses of anywhere between three and a half to five and a half percent within the mid cap IT space. Some stocks that are bucking the trend in today's trading session and otherwise red screen Vodafone idea is among the top gainers today five and a half percent higher. Reddington after its earnings continues to move from strength to strength as does Piramal Pharma and BLS International is having a good day at the office. Stocks that are doing well on the back of strong volumes in today's session Rainbow Medicare, Chalet Hotels, Jupiter Wagons, Doms Industries is at the day's high, 7% higher on very strong volumes. And lastly, some other stocks that are extending losses in today's session, Five Star Business Finance, Manapuram Finance are the two of these, two of these stocks that are not having a very good day in today's session. Back to you guys. Well, interestingly, the list of the green is uh, much higher, right? So thank you so much, uh, Hermas, for joining in with all those names. Some interesting ones there. Photophone, for instance, up around 6 odd percent. But uh, as CNBC TV 18 celebrates 25 years of excellence, we invite you to the most anticipated event of the year, the CNBC TV 18 Global Le Leadership Summit, bringing together visionary policy makers like Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman, RBI Governor Shakti Kanta Das, we have industry leaders like HSBC India's Hitendra Dewey, Kodak Mahindra Bank's Uday Kotak, and trailblazing startup founders. This is where the roadmap for India's next 25 years of growth and global leadership will be charted. You do not want to miss this. Welcome back to Midcap Radar. Well, Prudent Corporate Advisory reported a decent set of Q2 numbers. The company saw its revenue rise nearly 15% 
while total expenses grew 14% on a sequential basis. To discuss this and more, we have Sanjay Shah, the Chairman and Managing Director at Prudent Corporate Advisory Services, joining us now. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Shah. Thank you so much for joining us. Wish you and your team a very happy Diwali. Uh, first up, you know, give us a sense of, number one, what percentage of your earnings are actually linked to the equity market rally? And also, with the last couple of weeks, the kind of correction that we are seeing in the markets, have you seen any impact on flows on SIPs? And what would be the resultant impact on revenues, if any? Well, thank you for inviting us. And uh, just convey my happy Diwali wishes to enter entire team of CNBC and all the viewers. So I think you are definitely very, very bang on as far as my earnings are concerned. So we are uh, representing purely the India's retail uh, investor sentiment. And if you look at last one year, uh, if my AUM has gone up by almost 58%, 44% has came by way of mark-to-market gain. So significant really has came in the AUM due to uh, stock market performance. And that is the reason, if you look at YOY, our EUM has gone up by 55% and my profit after tax has gone up by 69%. So I think the that has been uh, impacting significantly. Coming to your point regarding the retail sentiment, uh, I think probably uh, if I just give the number, uh, in the month of September, we ended the uh, quarter with a 1,7,000 crore of AUM. And in this uh, month till date, I think the market has gone down by 7.5%. However, yesterday my AUM was about 1,4,000 crore. So just trying to communicate that overall sentiment are conducive, money is not moving out. I think the SIP big also growing uh, strength on strength. And if you look at, I think because of entire uh, AUM, which is mix of hybrid, balance advantage, multi-asset allocations, large cap, and the mid cap, overall impact on the mutual fund portfolio at our end is about three and a half, four percent. So overall, retail is very, very strong, and the net numbers are very, very positive in the current month. So there is no impact on the retail side. Confidence are significantly better. And if I extrapolate this for the full year, uh, if you do not see significant downside from here on, and if market remain uh, in this range more for some more point of time, I think retail will still remain committed as far as SIPs are concerned because in case of SIP, with every fall as new money is coming in for the investments, I think retail is not significantly impacted. Okay. It'll be interesting to see the October number because September saw that SIP number about 24,000 crore rupees. So, uh, very important time to understand whether the retail culture continues or not. Uh, Mr. Shah, your AMC yields are coming under pressure due to telescopic pricing. Uh, is there any cut in commissions paid by them to you? Is there an impact on revenue or margins, if any, if you can explain this to us? Yeah, so if you, if you look at, I think, the um, uh, last couple of years, the mark-to-market really has been very, very significant. And because as the AUM goes up, because of SEBI's uh, pricing structure, it, with every 5,000 crore AUM going up, the TR goes down. And after a long period of time, I think the largest AMC of the country, which is the HDFC, has uh, uh, transferred the uh, price, uh, the TR cut to the distributors, and we are also the one who has been impacted. However, if I tell you about the numbers. It was the Nippon 1 scheme and the HDFC was reduced the price on the overall book. But if I'll tell you about the 1 lakh crore of my AUM, if I let us assume earn uh, with a 1% yield 1,000 crore, the cut which is going to impact on my top line is roughly about 6 crore. So I think less than half a basis point impact has came as far as my uh, top line is concerned. We are one of the largest B2B player of the country. So uh, if I earn, let's say, 100 rupees, I share 65 to 70 rupees to my distributors. So we also passed on 65 to 70 percent to our uh, distributors. So our impact on the bottom line would be limited to about uh, about less than uh, two business point. Okay. Okay. So at the end of Q1, you had actually told that you expect to maintain a similar kind of margin, although on an absolute basis point, margins may change as the commissions come down. Uh, would you like to elaborate on that at the end of Q2? Where do you stand? So actually, uh, in the Q1, my top line was about 91, 92 basis point. In the Q2 also, I'm in the similar range, mainly because if you look at in the second quarter, my or let's say about the entire first half, my net sales was about uh, 12, my, my gross sales was about 12 to 13,000 crore, which is 12% of my current book. And if you look at 
post 2019 when entire uh, what you call the pricing structure got revised if you remember 2019 ke pehle we used to on upfront as well as trail and then we moved to a entire trail model so currently my new business gives me a one or two base point higher yield and because my new business volume is significantly higher my yield has remained protected in the uh, entire first quarter first half Okay, so new business gives one to two basis points higher yield, and new business is growing faster. Or at least it's a bigger contributor overall to yields. Uh, I just want to understand what's the differential between the commissions you make on distribution of, say, mutual fund products versus insurance products. Where do you see more margin? Because I think the uh, I think both has to be looked at separately because mutual fund is entirely based on the trail where lifelong you continue to earn a percent while the insurance is a one time revenue linked to the premium whenever you mobilize so definitely the insurance revenue goes into a significantly higher percentage. Just for example, if you do something, let's say the life insurance non-par business, which is the kind of uh, investment product only, you are in the range of forty to fifty percent, which is linked to the uh, premium. While in case of mutual fund, you earn one percent, but you continue to earn one percent for the lifelong. So both are non-comparable, mm. man. Mm. Okay, uh, Mr. Shah, give us a sense of the revenue mix now going forward. How do you see the mutual fund business growing, the non-mutual fund business, and especially insurance off a low base is growing very strongly. So, how do you see the revenue mix pan out, and uh, any growth rates you could uh, you know forecast for us? So, frankly, we do not give any forward guidance. However, uh, as far as mutual fund is concerned, there is one very strong uh, factor as far as prudent is concerned. So, we have a very strong SIP book. So, if you look at, I think the month of uh, September, we ended the SIP book with 870 crore monthly collection, and we have about 115 crore of STP, which a money move from liquid fund to equity. So, roughly about 1000 crore. So, if you annualize this to 12000 crore divided by total EM, we have about 12% uh, collection comes by of sip and we assume that 10 se 12 taka should come by way of mark to market so on a longer term at least 3 to 5 year horizon you can easily project that the equity m should grow in the range of 20 to 22% so i think the the, the mutual fund itself is likely to grow at a better pace However, in my overall revenue basket, insurance is significantly lower. I'll just give you the number. We have thirty-one thousand mutual fund distributors. We have converted twelve thousand four hundred fifty people as point of sales. So, still large number of people are yet to be converted. Plus, people who already became point of sales are still everybody is not productive. So, hardly about four thousand five thousand people gives me the business. So, you are very very true. Insurance on a lower base, we have very strong possibility that it can definitely grow at twenty-five thirty percent. But mutual fund will also continue to. Grew at twenty twenty two percent. So overall, currently mutual fund is roughly about seventy eight percent, and non mutual fund products are twenty two percent. We believe in next two three years mutual fund will go below seventy five, and rest all product will will probably in the range of twenty five to twenty eight percent. All right. So that is the growth rates you are expecting for both insurance and mutual fund business. You know, you spoke about additional product offerings as well in quarter one. Be it ULIBS, be it uh, the Fund Bazaar platform, and the other aspects of the business as well. By when do you launch it? And are you seeing interest in ULIBS because that is not considered as an investment option so much uh, generally? Uh, what makes you confident about launching this product? So normally we do not, we never used to give ULIP because we are very strong in the mutual fund side, and we always believe that ULIP is nothing but the competitive product to the mutual fund. However, in case of insurance, now the insurance companies are also moving towards trail concept in the ULIP, where the upfront cost would be very very low, and hence it becomes a on the revenue side more or less similar product, and the expenditure side also they both are similar. So we started. Uh, adopting that product into our uh, product basket from the second quarter, yet we are yet to see a, a strong traction. And another important thing is, if you look at the structure of the product, we have one hundred percent subsidiary called Genex, which is the insurance broker. We also became corporate agent in the Prudent Corporate, which is the hundred percent hold uh, the main parent company. And we have very strong technological platform called Fund Bazaar. And we wanted to provide all the product to my mutual fund investors under one login. So there we started providing the uh, ULIP. So we believe the traction is yet to come. The reason for adoption is that on the cost side and the revenue side, both are becoming now uh, parallel. Thank you so much, Mr. Shah, for joining us and explaining to us in depth about Q2, the way forward, and also the business going forward. Let's now slip into a short break. We'll get you more on the markets and stock specific action on the other side. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. You're still tuned in with Cap Radar. Well, some pockets in the broader markets are doing well. Paris Defense is one of them. It's gaining on the back of recent news flow. The company has uh, also sp uh, delivered a good set of numbers. Upasna is joining in with all the details. The stock is up 4%, Upasna. Well, the company's received orders worth 42 crore from Ministry of Defence. This order is mainly for the supply of five types of electronic control subsystems used in thermal imaging, fire control systems, and to be delivered mainly to the Indian Armed Forces. Now, if we look at company's consolidated order book, it has increased five times from March 21 to August 2024. And mind you that the company has given an order book guidance to reach about 2,500 crores by FY28. So we'll be keeping a track on that. Now, looking at the company's result, companies reported strong a set of numbers this quarter. Revenue stood at 87 crores with an uptick of 43% on a one-way basis. And this strong revenue growth was mainly led by companies optics and optronic system segment. Now coming to EBITDA, EBITDA saw an uptick of 46% leading to an EBITDA margin expansion of 70 basis points at 26.1%. Now companies path stood at 12.7 crore with an uptick of 46% on a one-way basis. So all in all, a good order win and also a good quarter result is what is leading to a gain in the Paris Defence stock. Thank you so much for that, Upasna. Paris Defence gaining in today's trading session. Well, auto sales numbers for the month of October will be released tomorrow. Sudarshan is here with the key expectations. It's going to be an interesting month for these auto companies. When they report sales for the month of October, this will also have the numbers that they have received during the festive season. So overall volumes for the month of October are going to be mixed with two wheelers and tractors are expected to see a growth and passenger vehicles may see a flat performance whereas commercial vehicles may see a decline. Retail festive demand is going to be healthy for two wheelers followed by passenger vehicles and tractors. Now talking about segment wise, first about two wheelers, Growth is seen in the range of 4 to 20 percent, with TVS and Asher Motors are expected to outperform, whereas Bajaj Auto is expected to underperform the peers. Now, talking positives about two wheelers, first, retail festive demand is best amongst all the segments. Retail festive growth is seen somewhere in the range of 10 to 12 percent. And one more positive is rural growth continues to remain healthy. And if we talk negative, that is urban growth continues to lag the rural. Now, coming to passenger vehicle, retail festive growth here is seen around 6% for the industry with Maruti and Hyundai may see a decline in total wholesales and m and is expected to outperform the peers. And for Tata Motors, weak commercial vehicle may weigh on the overall sales. Now, if you talk negatives about passenger vehicle, first, it has a high base. Second, here also urban growth continues to lag. And third, these companies have been providing major discounts due to competitive intensity. And now, if you talk positive, the, it is second half of the festive season has been much better than the first half. Coming to commercial vehicle, Ashok Leyland may report a decline both MOM and year on year. And negative here is decline on high base for cargo vehicles. And positive is EV build generation has been higher than the last year. Last one is tractor. Here we are expecting a flat performance year on year. On month on month basis, growth may be in double digits. If we talk positive triggers about tractor, there has been improving farmer sentiment on surplus rainfall and there has been better Kharif production. So overall for the month of October, we are expecting a mixed trend where two wheelers may outperform other segments. Thank you so much for that solution. Well, this particular month is going to be especially crucial for auto sales. Well, let's take a quick look at the market. Uh, have a look at some of the banking names. You know, going near the day's lowest point, the Nifty Bank Index 2 under pressure. Access Bank, one stock, you know, that suddenly moved to the day's lowest point. RBL Bank, after a brief respite, you know, that particular stock too, down almost 2-2.5%. Two, two Some of the consumer names, have a look at names like Tata Consumer, that stock also down 2-2.5% two, two in the session today. So some weakness emerging, there has been a bit of buying in the last 15-20 to 20 minutes of trade. Uh, look at names like Dr. Lal Path Lab, you know, that particular stock has moved to the day's highest point. A name like Obra Realty too has moved up and uh, you know, doing quite well in otherwise a very lackluster market. Uh, but with that, it's all the time we have on this edition of Midcap Radar, Mutual Fund Corner, when we return.